looking through my bulletin board, I was about to start talking today about careers for scanners because one of the big problems that often comes up is that scanners say, how am I ever going to have a career if I get bored with everything? I fall in love with everything, but then I get bored with it. And there are really a lot of answers to that. I'll, I'll give you just a couple of quickies so I can move on to what I found on my bulletin board, which is very funny. <clears throat> First of all, the thing you want to do with all your interests, if you want to be sure to get to all your interests, and you can, let me start that sentence again. There's an answer to this question, and I'm going to give it to you. What do you do when you want to do everything? And the answer is everything. You do everything. How? There's not enough hours in the day. Yeah, there are enough hours in the day. You just have to remember two important things. The first thing is... Figure out what you love most about that thing you're interested in. Not everything about it. The assumption is that you should do everything in that field. You know you're not going to do that. And anyway, nobody does. That's a myth. But the point is, figure out what you love about it. That's the sweet spot. And only, only study that or learn that or do that. Only. And the second really important thing, and you're not going to like this, a lot of people don't, is don't try to make money at it. I'm not saying it will never make money, but nothing makes money at first, okay? So just forget about that so you'll do it your way. I'll talk about making money at the things you love later. Sometimes it's a good idea, sometimes it's a really bad idea, but I don't want to talk about it today. So what do you do when you want to do everything? The answer is everything. But then you find these very funny things on my, um, on my bulletin board. I saw something here I haven't seen before. I'll read it to you. Uh, somebody said, do you get thoughts about new careers every day? Yesterday, the idea kept popping into my head that I'd like to go back to school and study culinary arts. I got the idea from visiting technical schools in Milwaukee and Chicago and talking to students who were standing outside. I also met someone in Tucson who lived in a condo across the street who was a chef. I think it might be feasible to get a job anywhere in the country with an associate degree in culinary arts. Now, that may or may not be true, and uh, but... Uh, and she, I don't know if she likes to cook, and I don't know if she likes the whole program, but it's an interesting place and a very typical one for a scanner to start. The answer, somebody answered and said, I love it, my two nephews took culinary, and true, you can go anywhere. Of course, we haven't decided if that's really what, not everybody wants to go everywhere. Some people love the idea, others don't. So make sure we're talking about you whenever you write your list of what you want to do, okay? I've never met two scanners who were alike, incidentally, so... When I wrote down the nine types of scanners in my book, Refuse to Choose, that was my first, that was the first approach. I don't know anybody else who's done it. And I hope somebody who knows a lot more about research than I do will find out if that's true. Are there 10 types? Are two of them the same? I don't know. I did the best I could based on the hundreds of people I have worked with and coached and spoken with through the years. So, but let me continue with this. My nephews did it. They loved it. Uh, uh, when they come to visit me, the food is great, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then someone came up and said, well, since we're talking about the things you're interested in, I'd like to do these. Here's what I'd like to study. This is another interesting little error that uh, scanners make about what they want to do about the things they love. Incidentally, all scanners are on the honor system with me. When I say Write down as many things as you can think of that you'd love to do. They can't go alphabetically and write down everything that exists. They really have to have a feeling about each thing that they really are interested in it, at least as far as they know, that moment that they're making the list. It's got to be sincere. Um, but this one is, I think, and it's still like, listen to it, <laughs> drive a, a career counselor to drink. I'd like to study immunology, toxicology, law, medicine, Theoretical Physics, Medieval and Early Modern European History, French, Maori, Latin, and Scots Gaelic Languages, with a view to Russian and German in the future. I'd like to study piano, classical music theory, health and political and education and development and neuropsychology, history of science and technology, art history, fine art, photography, architecture, international finance, international business, international politics, development, mediation, classics, film, theology, genetics, molecular science, interior design, and I guess that will do for today. But then a few minutes later she wrote, oh, oh, I forgot marine biology, Italian, Spanish, 
pharmacology, physiology, anatomy, medical anthropology, and yeah, a chef master class or two wouldn't be bad. I think I left out nutrition, she wrote in the next one. <laughs> Um, I did answer her, and I'll give you my answer, wait a second. Um, but I will say this, that if you have a list like that, under each one of those things, write what you love about it. What, what makes you curious about that one thing? Because you, when you say, I'd like to study it, that means you'd like to go from beginning to end until you're a master at it. No scanner really does that, or very rarely. Uh, and if they do that, they do something else or five other things in addition. But ask yourself, if she says, i got to go back to her list, immunology, toxicology, and law, and medicine, I think, well, that's kind of interesting. Why would she want to study those? Something happened that interested her. This, she didn't just find this list in a book of careers. Something happened. She's interested in being immune to something in toxicology is about poison, she's interested in medicine, and she's interested in law. Something unfair happened to somebody who was sick. I'd like to know about that. Then she says theoretical physics. I'd have to ask her, what, what is it about that? What is it? Why? When she moves to medieval and early modern European history, I would check if she was sitting in the room with me to see if it's connected in any way with the first stuff, or if she just remembered how much she enjoys those books when she reads them. And I'd say, what do you love about the most? Because I kind of like medieval history too, but I'm not very interested in knights, dungeons, dragons, princesses, or the Holy Grail. I just don't care about that. I care about the barbarians who invaded over and over and then started becoming part of Rome and wanted to learn and wanted even to go into religion. And um, I, I'm interested in them. I just don't care about the knights and the ladies. So you have to say, why? What is it? What is it you love about that most? What's the touchstone, as I said in Wishcraft? What's the sweet spot? If you could, where would you love to start? If you knew you could only study it one day, what would you love to find out? Then she says, uh, French, Maori, Latin, Scots, Gaelic languages with a view to Russian and German in the future. I'd say, why? Because I'm also interested in all languages, and I can't learn languages. I'm really lousy at it. I mean, I'm, I've got people in my family who are wonderful at languages. They just, they just dare to go out into these new worlds and struggle until they can actually speak. And they have a gift for it, I think. And I don't. Um, and I'm, I'm lousy at it. I like to pronounce words with a funny accent, and then that's the end of it. I'm probably a stand-up comic. Um, but why do I like languages? I'll tell you why I like languages. I can tell you. I don't know why she does. I like languages that are not Indo-European like mine because I believe that a whole new kind of thinking is contained in the kind of language people use. They don't use verbs or they talk only in the past or something amazing. And so I just need an afternoon for somebody to explain to me how is it different from the languages I, I understand. I mean, I can speak a little Spanish and I can speak a little French, but I don't know anything about Gaelic languages, and I don't, I, I, I'm pretty sure they're not Indo-European. I'm pretty sure they have a whole different set. So if these humans, widely spread, came up with their own languages, not affected by each other, I'd like to know what they did. I'm very interested in um, American Indian languages, for example. They're really something. I'll go to that. Then she says, piano, classical music theory. And I think... Yeah, that's yummy. You're somebody who wants to know what makes things tick? Okay. Or is there some other reason she likes it? She says health and political education and development and neuropsychology, history of science and technology. I think, I think we're back to the first one. She talks about art history, fine art, photography, architecture. Okay, so what I'm saying, you understand what I'm saying. I'd say why? Why? What is it? What's a sweet spot? Because I think we'd find five themes in here. Five themes. And there would be, it would make sense. But... How is she going to study them all? Well, she's not. She's not going to major in all of them. She's going to find out what the sweet spot is, and she's going to study that. And that's what I would advise now. I also, because I suggested this in my book, here's how I answered her. If you listed, if I answered a lot of people who continued to the same thing. If you listed lots of things, go out and get 30 three-ring binders, the ones with plastic windows on the outside. Print out the list you wrote here and tape it to your computer. Pick one of the subjects that's smiling at you right now. Here's how you pick. The question is always, where will I find the time to do all the things I like? 
put a list of them there. It's Tuesday, it's the afternoon. You either have an hour, 10 minutes, or a weekend ahead of you. <clears throat> Not that it's Tuesday, but. And just pay attention to your happiness levels. Listen carefully. You have a, you have a, 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 a gauge inside of you that tells you, number one, what you're talented at, number two, what you should be doing right now. You can't always follow it when you're working for somebody else, you got homework to do or something, but you should always know it because when you're free to make your choices, you have to know it. And that is, on a scale of one to 10, how happy does this make you? Look at the word, if she writes, this one wrote, journalist, dancer, choreographer, performance artist. Okay, I know they're all wonderful, but look at one, and on a scale of one to 10, which one is the highest? They're all high. You don't have to, you will never be cheated out of them. I promise you, I promise you. You have to really do every single one of them, unless you discover that you've made an error and you want something else. <clears throat> but <laughs> I will say one thing she wrote, oh my God, I can't believe I ran out of ideas. That's a first. And she did say something else, kind of like a cathartic release of all my inner people. But you really are one person. Somebody has divided all these things up into different disciplines, but they weren't always divided up. Everybody didn't always believe they were different. You're not different people. You're one person with a love of learning. You love what's new. You don't love everything because there are certain things you genetically just don't get and don't care about. And there are others that smell sweet just because you're curious. Once you peek in, you realize that's all I wanted to know. That's, and the others are, oh my God, where is this going? And you have to respect that. So you have to have, it's very crude, but it's oddly precise. You have to understand your happiness level. So look at your list. And that's why I say, see which one is calling to you. Pick one of the subjects that's smiling at you right now and give it an hour or a half an hour or 20 minutes or a day or a week, however long you've got, however long you stay interested. Keep all your notes about it in that binder. Go on the internet, print everything out. Because you're not always at your computer. You want to take things with you to a desert island or a coffee shop. Um, when you get less interested and something else starts smiling more brightly, put this one back, make sure you see it. You're not saying goodbye forever. You can pick it up whenever you want, whenever it... Look, you do it with food. When it's time for dessert, you look, am I in the mood for chocolate? Do I want fruit? And you ask the taste buds. You ask yourself. You don't tell yourself, I want ice cream, I want fruit. You go, what do I want? And usually we've kept in touch with what we want to eat because nobody really cares. You know, you can't do that with things that society has said you're supposed to do this and you're supposed to do that. But usually when it comes to colors or food, you have a pretty good idea what you want right now. Are you in the mood for pizza? Nah. You know, you know the answer to that. So you can look at these lists and say, what am I in the mood for? Understanding that this is not your only decision. This is not your last decision. This is your decision for right now, today, that's the one I'm going to do. Are you allowed to be that happy? Yeah. It's efficient. It's efficient to pay attention to what makes you happy. That's how nature talks to us. It makes us not happy with what it does not want us to do. And it makes us happy with what it wants us to do. Don't start giving me a lecture on how I know your daughter has to do her homework. I know, I'll talk about that another time. Just remember, pay attention to what makes you happy. Your heart has taste buds. You don't decide what makes you happy. You discover it. Have some respect. So if there's 552 things you want to do, don't worry about it. Just write them all down and start seeing which one is singing to you today. Okay? Okay. Hey, that's it for today. I want you to please leave comments. Tell me um, if you have questions or comments or you agree or you disagree or you've got a bigger problem I didn't address. Love to hear it. I want you to do that. I also want you to subscribe. I really do because I'm going to be coming up with a lot of these things. And don't let these clothes fool you. Um, sometimes they look the same and sometimes they won't. I'm going to... I'm like you. I'm a scanner. When I'm in love, I just don't want to stop. So I'm not going to stop to change my clothes, okay? And uh, when I get interested again, I'll do a whole bunch in a blue shirt probably. Now there's one more thing right here below, right here. You see? There's a link to that bulletin board I was telling you about. I want you to leave your comments here, but if you want to have a really good discussion, 
You just go to boards.barbershare.com, that's all, and find Refuse to Choose, because there's a lot of forums there. And um, I'll be there, I'll hear you, and I'll be here. I hope you leave some comments. See you next time.